We would be honored if you would join us. Greetings, fellow fans of the Wars in the Stars. <laughs> I'm back with another vintage collection figure. Uh, this one is the Mandalorian from Minds of Mandalore. Minds of Mandalore, based on season three. Uh, it is VC three twelve. Again, this is one I wasn't in an urgent sort of rush to get out and grab as soon as it came out. Um, actually, you know, it was actually uh, Brian Metal Jedi. Um, he picked this one up the other day and messaged me and I'm like, well, you know what? I can always do with another Mandalorian. <laughs> I, was like, I don't know that I do, but I'm sort of looking at my shelf and I'm like, there is a little, a little gap where I can slot in another Mandalorian. And given that this one has the soft goods cape, which was previously only exclusive with the Razor Crest, um, and I think, hold that thought. Yeah, so it was also available with uh, the N1 Starfighter. So you can see he's got the soft goods. I kind of wish this new one came with the uh, Beskar Spear too. This has been the only one that's come with the Beskar Spear, um, except for the, the hallway one, the hallway three pack. Um, but yeah, we're talking about man, minds, Mans of Mindalore. <laughs> I need to learn how to talk good. Um, yeah, Minds of Mandalore. Doesn't seem to be too different. We'll take a look, compare him to a couple other Mandos. And uh, yeah, without further ado, let's bust him open and have a look. All right, folks, here is Din Djarin, the Mandalorian, Minds of Mandalore, out of the packaging. As always, we take a look at the packaging, the accessories, the paint applications, the articulation, and then at the very end, we'll do a peg test and a comparison because I have, do, I have four other loose Mandalorian figures here that we're going to compare it to. Um, so yeah, first things first, accessories comes with the dark saber, which uh, leaves a little bit to be desired. I'll be honest, um, because it is this sort of real sort of soft curly plastic. I just, if it was cast, you know, I could forgive the the sort of the the sort of vague sort of wishy washy sort of white paint on it, which you know, it's it's such a slender little object um, that it's hard to get that super super right. That side looks nice, like it's just got the white edge. The black in the middle of that side, yeah, not so much. Um, but if it was just cast in a in a sort of a firmer plastic, you know, you could, it probably would be fine. Would probably be okay with it. It's just it is a really soft plastic. You know, it's it's prone to sort of warping and bending and stuff. Um, it's a little bit of a bummer, but uh, this one I might actually cut the blade off and just just have it unlit. I don't know. I'm not sure yet. I haven't decided. Um, it's always nice to have options does come with his blaster pistol, which we've seen multiple times now. And his little vibro knife, which we have seen with the N1 Starfighter version, the only version I have here that isn't loose. There doesn't appear to be anywhere to put this one, whereas the Black Series version, obviously being a little bit bigger, has those opportunities to add a little bit more. Um, does have a little sheath in his boot but uh yeah let's take a look at, at mando anyway i'm just looking at the the sort of the silver oh jetpack is removable too for those playing at home it's a slightly different color to the previous release a little bit more a uh, little bit a little bit silvery as opposed to that sort of gunmetal color but still doesn't really have the sort of silver quality of of the rest of his armor which is not a big deal really But yeah, in terms of the silver of the Beskar armor, I think it looks really nice. Um, really nice sheen to it. You know, it's not it's not vac metal. I don't think that's a that's an option these days for whatever reason. Um, but I think it looks pretty good and it's nice and clean. I do love the soft goods on the uh, on the cape. That's always nice. I do appreciate a good soft goods cape. Especially when you sort of just you get the molded ones and they do look nice and it sits well and it's you know visually it's nice but in terms of posability and playability the uh, the soft goods definitely comes in handy. Yeah, paint apps are pretty pretty clean all over, even the little red dots there on the belt. 
little details on the hand, on the on the gloves, on the little hand armor plates. Even he sort of repainted Zero's sort of plate that he's got here. You know, this was reused from the uh, Muldo Crease Mandalorian, so we have seen this piece before. You know, he goes through a few little armor changes bit by bit as the uh, seasons progress. It does some upgrades and little tweaks. Which is nice. It's it's nice to see that sort of evolution. But yeah, paint wise, it's uh it's pretty clean all over. It's it's very nice. I mean, it's, the T visor on the helmet is, you know, from what I can see, it's pretty much spot on. You know, occasionally it will spot one where there's you know the black bleeds a little bit. Onto the side, depending on the uh, the way the computer prints them, but it looks pretty good. And some of the small details, small little silver details on the belt. You know, some figures will come out and they'll completely miss some of those details, but I think with a with a what Hasbro is calling now an A-lister, like the Mandalorian. It's it's a figure you're always going to see in the line now, along with Darth Vader, you know maybe Luke Skywalker, but yeah, Mandalorian, Darth Vader, they call them like the A-listers, the evergreen figures. You know these are the ones that you're going to always have in the line. You know, there's always going to be one out there. You know there aren't going to be there isn't going to be much gap between releases, which is cool. It's fine. You know gives everyone an opportunity. Particularly with Mandalorian not going not going anywhere with a movie on the on the cusp, you know. Talk about Sigourney Weaver being being tapped to, to have a casting role in Mandalorian Grogu movie, which you know that'd be a big coup. It'd be very big. It'd be awesome. But yeah, really liking the look of him. He looks good. Holds the holds the dark saber okay. It's a little bit loose. Like I said, if that was a firmer like a more solid plastic. I feel like it might even just hold just a little bit better in there. Just that sort of flexible plastic. It's just, yeah, it, it does it's, it does the job. Like, it's fine. And it does, it, it looks cool with him holding it. I like it. I'm going to try, see how he holds the, the vibro blade. I mean, that seems to hold reasonably well in that hand as well. So, yeah, no real problems. We know that the uh, blaster will fit well in his hand, in the trigger trigger hand. We've seen that before, and it does fit in the holster, which is nice. So just, yeah, there's extra little accessories like the vibro blade, vibro knife. You know, it's, it's just a nice way to alternate your displays. So yeah, articulation-wise, you've got the ball joint in the head and the neck, so double ball joint there. Uh, ball hinge in the shoulders and the uh, the pads shoulder pads do come up just to allow that extra little bit of movement there is a hinge in the elbows so you get a nice nice bend in the elbows you get that sort of torso crunch which allows for good movement You've got the ball and socket thighs i oh know they're hinge thighs so they've still got the hinge so that's yeah so they've obviously kept that sort of carry on over most of the joints in the new newer figures have sort of been swapped out for the ball and sockets now, so this one's still reusing some of the older parts. And well, that's fine. That's fine. There's nothing wrong with it. Um, but yeah, they got the swivel at the hinge, swivel at the hip, <laughs> hip. Uh, ball hinge at the knee there, ball hinge in the ankles, and a rocker there for the for the ankle as well. So there's is the articulation, pretty solid. And uh, yeah, I've got one of the uh, KR Kessel Run action figure stands here. And I dare say. Probably the medium size peg will fit exquisitely in there. So yeah, that fits on nicely, nice peg. Maybe that big one, probably a little bit too big. That's it's definitely that that peg size is definitely designed more so for Black Series, whereas these other two little little stand little pegs here on the in the middle 
and on the left depending which side you're looking at it definitely designed for vintage so that's probably just a little bit loose for that one but it worked for Hu Yang very well when I did the review of Hu Yang last week so yeah he stands very nicely on that stand that's why we did it why we made them so let's compare him to some of the others let's put him over here so the very first Mandalorian, this is him in, you know, season one, episode one, because he changed changed the pauldron pretty much straight away. So yeah, using a lot of the same parts still, which is fine. And then we have the next release, which was the Beskar Mandalorian. Is it a few, few little armor upgrades? Another pauldron. Got the got the upwards. Upgrade there. And then we have the Moldo Crease, which is the sort of snow covered Mando. That's where he got the upgrade for, for Zero's thigh plate. And then we got this is the one that came with the Razor Crest, which is pretty much just the soft goods version of this one. Uh, this one I keep in the N1, just because I didn't open the N1 Starfighter version. But uh, yeah, this one pilots the N1. There's five different versions. It'd be cool to see like all the different versions. Like before he gets the Mudhorn Signet, that'd be cool. But yeah, I'm lo I'm loving the soft goods. I think it looks really good. And here is the fresh new boy. I'm liking it. Always nice. I mean, how good does Mandalorian look though? It's just totally badass. So we have five different versions of Mandalorian. Obviously, there's been a couple others. But, um, yeah, only, like I said, the, the N1 Starfighter version back there, which you can't really see very well, but it's there. But, yeah, I hope you've enjoyed taking a look. There was also the other version where he's sort of battle damaged, which I neglected and I left on the shelf just because he is sitting at the back. He's actually laying down because he's just had his uh, butt handed to him right at the end there. <laughs> but <laughs> I appreciate you all coming to check out my channel. If you enjoyed the review, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe. Always appreciate everyone's support. You'll go, you guys will rock. Um, and yeah, we'll see you again for some more reviews very soon. Till then, may the force be with you.